Hey, it's Eric Kumar, so my name is Kiku. Well, actually, it's Valentine's Day, so let me start off by saying Valentine's Day to everybody. Hope you have a good Valentine's Day. And for this issue for Valentine's Day of Vista, I'm going to show you three tips. I have them all lined up right here. And uh, throw in some extra stuff, some new updates about my Vista tutorials and XP tutorials, stuff like that. First off, uh, I'll just give you my three tips of today. First will be uh, how to find secret boot screen in Vista how to set up additional clocks and how to get a uh, run how to make a shortcut for uh, arrow and I'm going to teach you about that in a second so first off to get the secret GY boot it's basically Aurora if you've seen that uh, screensaver it's pretty much kind of like that just uh, for the boot screen instead of saying Windows just uh, you know just that little loading bar it's going to have a background just go to boot and this is uh, how do you get to this well first off you go to start menu run Type in ms config, ms config, so ms c o n f i g, hit OK, and like I said, you'll get this box, and I already have that open, and my UAC just went off, so oops, these, yeah, should sure turn that off. Uh, anyways, go to boot, and then down here you have safe boot, boot log, base video, OS boot information. There's one that says no GUI or GUI, no uh, graphic user interface is what that stands for boot. Now if you click that what will happen is uh, for some reason it's I guess it's hidden in there. No, the, no, the graphic user interface will pop up with the Aurora background when you boot. So you just click that, check it, and hit OK and hit apply. Or actually if you check it then you'll be able to hit apply. And just hit OK and then you're out of there. And then it should ask you to restart your computer. Just restart and you'll see the boot screen. And uh, But yeah, so just click that, hit OK, uh, hit apply, hit OK, and restart your computer and you should see it. Next thing to, for today, uh, how uh, how to set up additional clocks in Windows Vista. Now a lot of people wonder how to do this. You know, if they want to keep track of more than one time, uh, you never know. So how do you do that? Well, it's pretty simple. So basically, you just go down to your clock, click it, go to Change Date and Time Settings, and then go up here and uh, let's see. And then you see there's additional clocks uh, for some uh, by default. These are set to Osaka, Sapporo, Tokyo. That's a place in Japan. I guess that's just because it's a main city. I don't live there, but that's just like a default clock. So if I say show this clock, basically, uh, you know, it shows down. It's a lot of places in Japan because that's where I registered this laptop. And you, now you have Hawaii and all that stuff like that. So let's, for example, let's say I want to know where, let's say I have, some, I know somebody who lives in, uh, let's see. I should just I should I'm just pick a random place. Uh, let's say I know a person who lives in Taipei. So I hit Taipei, hit OK. Oh, I can even hang on there. I could even enter a dis a display name if I go right here. If you see right here under additional clocks, I can even hit a display name. Let's say I can name that one Taipei, and hit OK. And if you see here when I hover over it. Local time for me would be 9:44 p.m. and Taipei would be 8:44 p.m. So this is actually pretty interesting because I'll be setting this up for other, you know, for state stateside time stuff like that. If you don't want it, uh, you just uncheck show clock, show this clock. You can have up to three clocks total. So yeah, and just hit make sure you hit OK or reply and then OK whatever you want to do. So that's another tip. And lastly, what are these commands? Now these commands are shortcuts. Now I know they look a little bit confusing, but don't worry, I'm going to teach you what they do. First off, you have this command right here, run dll, run your dll file, 32.exe, dwn, api, number 104. Basically, you know the whole, oh, uh, excuse me, sorry, arrow, transparency. Now this feature, this shortcut's not going to teach you how to turn off, it's not going to turn off arrow per se, it's going to turn off the transparency in arrow. Transparency is what lets you see through the transparent, uh, look through the window border, you know, whether it's too, if it's like, you know, you can see through it or if it's too bolded. Right now my transparency is off, but I'm going to teach you, see, let's see, I want to turn it on. I'm just going to copy this code and I'm even going to do it for you here. So you don't, so you can uh, actually see that it works. Now I go to my desktop, right click and go to, wait for the uh, icon to go up, go to new, and then click that or just wait for the, uh, Tool, the toolbar right here to open, right there, and then go to shortcut, and then you're gonna get this. Now just paste that in there. 
Now, uh, I'll leave that link in the uh, video description. So, let's we'll hit next. And then the name for the shortcut, I'll say transparency on. Because that's what it is. Now I say finish. Now, watch what happens when I click it. Look at the, if you see right there, did you notice that? The transparency is on now. Now, let's say I want to turn off. And you'll see the difference. I'll copy this one. And shortcut. And copy that. Okay. I'll just name it off. Or if off. Off. Now click it and now. Oh, oh. And there you go. Here, flip that for a second. There you go. It's back on. So uh, those are your two codes. How to turn it off and on. I'll I'll leave it on. Now, if I made a mistake, uh, I'll I'll label I'll label 102 and 104 where like it'll say transparency off, transparency off just so you know so you just make a shortcut and you're good to go so it's a quick way to you know e easily uh, get to uh, your modes and stuff like that using shortcuts now I've got to talk about some quick updates with that three facts said and done uh, a lot of people have been asking if I you know where if you can get more they want to get more advanced tips or even simpler tips and what sites would I recommend stuff like that well, there's a lot of great sites out there. I suggest you go to forums. Uh, a couple good sites I like are a really site that's really helped me in my tutorials and helped me learn a lot just to, you know, customize my system. There's one called howtogeek.com. Yeah, it has a, he has a number of blog posts on uh, stuff for XP, Vista, Mac OS X, Ubuntu Linux, stuff like that. All of it, you can, you know, every common question asked and stuff like that. There's also... You can even go down to CNET. They have a lot of great features and quick tips out there, even videos on it. And uh, I myself will be soon starting a site just like this, where you can I'll post common questions and how you know how to disable that feature, which such and such for XP, for Vista, and when I get Mac OS 10, of course, and I have Ubuntu, so you know all that stuff will be coming. So guys, stay tuned for that site. That'll be coming up soon. And I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Look for more Vista tutorials to come because I actually, you know, I couldn't find a couple to, uh, you know, I couldn't really find some to start off with. But, uh, you know, I learned a new couple of stuff. You can always Google if you need to learn anything new. I'm just going to delete those. And if, you know, you, uh, just go to learn. You can always, you know, learn something new every day. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Look forward to the new website I'm building. I'm not sure what it's going to be called yet. But of course, it'll be associated with Tech World. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching.